The production possibility frontier represents the quantity of output that can be obtained for a certain quantity of inputs using a given technology. Depending on the technology, the production possibility frontier will have a certain shape. Let's see a graphical representation. This graph represents how much of two goods a firm can produce. The horizontal axis shows the production level of good X, while the vertical axis shows the production of good Y. The production possibility frontier determines the maximum output of both goods X and Y that can be obtained, given the technology. Every point on the production possibility frontier determines technically efficient levels of production, since production is at its maximum. All points inside the production possibility frontier are feasible. However, as the point shown inside the blue area, a change in production would increase efficiency, thus reducing idle capacity. Finally, points that are outside the production possibility frontier are not feasible. The factory does not have the appropriate technology or the necessary amounts of inputs to produce such quantities. This slope, which equals the marginal rate of transformation between x and y, shows us how, in order to increase the output x, the quantity of y must decrease. These two diagrams represent the production capacity of two goods, x on the left and y on the right. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the amount of capital K needed in the production process, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows the amount of labor L needed in the same production process. The isoquants show the different combinations of inputs needed to produce a certain amount of a good or service. An increase in production will only come when we displace the isoquant curves outwards. These two diagrams can be plotted together using what is known as the Edgeworth box, which makes it easier to compare quantities of capital and labor used, while also comparing quantities of good X and Y being produced. Indeed, it's not only easier to analyze, but also makes more sense, since the total available quantities of capital and labor are given. The points where the isoquants of different outputs combination intersect allow us to draw the contract curve, from which the production possibility frontier can be derived. Graphically, by connecting all points of tangency, the contract curve is constructed and represents all Pareto efficient allocations, which means all allocations outside the contract curve can be improved. For instance, take I. We could change production and move to point G, this way, production of good Y would increase while maintaining constant the production of good X. This is what we call a Pareto improvement, since Pareto efficiency is reached. From the contract curve, we can derive the production possibility frontier. It must be noted that both the contract curve and its derivative, the production possibility frontier, show all the solutions that are Pareto efficient from the firm's point of view. Production at point I is technically inefficient because the firm could increase the production of good Y while maintaining the production of good X, moving to the point G, which is on the production possibility frontier. Again, remember that even though all points inside the production possibility frontier are feasible, only those on the production possibility frontier are technically efficient. Finally, points outside the production possibility frontier such as J and K correspond to unattainable production levels, given the technology. The production possibility frontier can be helpful when analyzing a firm's decision process regarding production. It is also helpful when analyzing general equilibrium models.